Welcome everyone, Kirkwood School District Force in Motion 6th Grade Science. We're going to take a look at Goal 2 today. Goal 2 has two parts to it. Two, two. There you go. First part, students will solve for speed in the equation. Speed equals distance divided by time, making sure to use the correct units. The second part is that students will be able to contrast, that means what's the difference between velocity and speed. All right, the first part of that, we're going to really focus on this triangle that's right here, where we can use this triangle by covering up the different areas of the triangle to solve for any equation. Uh, so, for example, if we're looking for the speed, we would cover the speed and then divide distance divided by time. If we were looking for distance, we would cover up the distance and then you see what was left is speed times time. So as long as we have this triangle, and it'll be given to you at any point in time you need it, you can solve for any of the equations. The key thing is, can you label the items correctly? The second part is, what's the difference between speed and velocity? Now that we're paying attention to velocity, we need to make sure that we know and we can identify what those two different things are. So first part, let's get into this. First of all, how do you know if you're moving? Well, all motion is relative, meaning that motion is defined as an object that is changing its distance from another object. So, for example, um, if you're looking at this picture right here in the corner, you see that the train is moving. Well, we would assume that the train is moving. And we know that the train is moving because the station is standing still. Okay? That station is called a reference point. And a reference point helps us determine if an object is in motion. A reference point is a place or object used for comparison to determine if something is in motion. An object is in motion if it changes position relative to that reference point. So as you can see, you've got this uh, wonderful young lady looking out the window. She sees the cars, and she sees the cars are not moving. She is, therefore she's using that car as a reference point. When we are measuring distance, we like to use the <clears throat> SI unit for measurement. The SI unit for measurement, the International System for Measurement, um, is in meters. The International System for Time in seconds. So that means that when we are calculating speed, speed is always in meters divided by seconds, or you might have heard it as meters per second. Now I know that that sort of probably is going to bring up some questions. What about if I'm driving in my car? That's not meters per second. Well, we can change that unit, but it still has distance and time. Distance would be miles. Time would be hour. So in your car, you'll see you have miles per hour, MPH, okay, as an option. So let's take a look at this. We're going to solve using this equation a sample calculation and problem. Let me set it up for you right here. Check this out. You'll be amazed by it. Oh, in the air, into the pool. That was epic. Epic. Did you see that? Amazing. Perfectly calculated. Wonderful, wonderful. One more time. Wow. Ridiculous. So let's assume, based on that video, we could do a little, uh, little speed problem. So the distance between the ramp, uh, the start of the ramp, and the pool was 100 meters. In the time they started sliding was 8 seconds, and they landed at 14 seconds. Okay, so we're going to have to do a little math there. So the total time they were moving was 6 seconds, so 14 minus 8. So if we know the distance was 100 meters, and we know the time is 6 seconds, can we figure out his speed? And the answer is, of course, yes. Distance divided by time. 100 meters divided by 6 seconds. Bust it out in the calculator, you get the answer 16.6. .6. However, that would not be a full correct answer. We have to label that 16.6. .6. 16.6 what? The numbers cannot be naked. So, since our distance was in meters, our time was in seconds, we label it 16.6. .6 m divided by s, m over s, meters per second. 
So here's a little bit of a harder question. Okay. Oh, poor guy. Now, take a look at this. Calculate the distance the boy travels if his speed is two meters per second in three seconds. So this is a different problem. We're trying to figure out the distance. Let's take a look at this video. Oh, poor guy. No. Oh. Oh. Oh, no, it's stuck. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Oh! oh. Yes, yes, yes. There he goes! Yeah! He got it! That's awesome. So let's calculate that out. It's a little bit harder question, but we can still do it. So we got to calculate the distance, and the speed is two meters. Now imagine then covering up the distance, because that's what we want to find. We're going to cover it up. So here we go, got it covered, good. So what's our formula? Well, our formula then is left with speed times time, okay? Formula is speed times time. So here's how we do it. Two meters per second times three seconds. Two times three, six. Uh-oh, six what? We're trying to find its distance. We can't just have six as our answer. It must be six meters because the boy traveled at meters per second, okay? <clears throat> now, when we're looking at speed, there, there are two different kinds of speed. The first kind of speed is called average speed, total distance divided by total time. If you're taking a big, long trip from one place to the next, you would calculate your average speed. How fast did you go over an extended period of time? Okay, The total time that it took. Right? You could also try to figure out what's called instantaneous speed which is the rate at which that car, no, 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 that car, no, 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 that car, that car, no, wait, that one, no, wait, that, that one, that one, the rate at which a given car is moving in a given time. So at an instant, at that very instant right there, how fast is that car moving? That's called instantaneous time. Now, the second part of this was velocity. And when we're thinking about velocity, you can think about how speed and direction work together in this. So, when you know both speed and direction, you know an average velocity. For example, 25 kilometers per hour, but 25 kilometers per hour east. Okay? Important applications, of course, air traffic controllers, airplane pilots. You don't want those guys running into each other. So those are important to know and understand velocity. Okay, the next thing... The next thing is graphing. So when we take a look at graphing, you can show the motion of an object using a line graph. What you need to do to do that is you'll need to have a y-axis and an x-axis. The y-axis will have your distance. Your x-axis will have your time because that's what you control. The independent variable, what I control, always goes on the x-axis. That's the time. So at any point in time, you can note the distance and the time and an object has traveled. You can look at the slope to determine an object's speed. Distance, time. If I take 20 divided by 4, right there at that instance, 20 divided by 4 is 5. So I'll know that my speed at 20 meters was 5 meters per second. I could easily look at a graph and figure that out. Now let's come over here. My distance is 40. My time is 10. 40 divided by 10 is, yep, you got it, 4. 4 what? 40 meters divided by 10 seconds, 4 meters per second. Okay? So that slope, that rise over run, that rise per run, is the same thing as the distance divided by the time. Different slopes, so different changes in speed. So great picture straight out of your textbook, rise divided by run, distance divided by time, we can easily find the speed of an object, okay? Now, what do you notice the difference about these two graphs? Take a look. One graph has a straight line. The other graph has a line that sort of changes. What does that tell you? Well, it should tell you that one of them has a constant speed and one of them is speeding up and slowing down. There is 
changes in speed. Some of them are accelerating and some of them are decelerating. And then this graph over here with the straight line tells you that there's constant speed, not speeding up or slowing down. That was goal two. Students will solve for speed in the equation. Speed equals distance divided by time. Using correct units, students will be able to contrast velocity and speed. And on your way out, I got a great video for you to enjoy, sponsored by a great band called They Might Be Giants. Pretty good. Check it out. You'll enjoy it, I'm sure. It is a lot of fun. It's a couple minutes long, but it's a lot of fun to get into seeing how you can take a fun idea like speed and velocity, and put it into a pretty cool song. Greetings, citizens.